Key turn in five seconds. Four, three, two, one, mark. Ike 05, a Minuteman missile from Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, has just been launched out of Launch Facility 09 at Vandenberg Air Force Base. The missile combat crew's final key turn committed Mike 05 on its travel to its termination point, the Kwajalein Atoll, over 4,000 nautical miles away. Mike 05's flight serves the purposes of verification and reliability of our nation's intercontinental ballistic missile force. This launch is the mission of the 576 Test Squadron, which is responsible for the follow-on, operational test, and evaluation launches of ICBMs. The FOTNE process begins with the selection of the missile to be tested. After the missile selection, the task force commander is chosen, who in turn selects the remainder of the task force, maintenance, and operations personnel, who will represent the operational wing while at Vandenberg. The maintenance team at Minot is responsible for pulling Mike 05 off alert and preparing it for shipment to Vandenberg. After the laborious task of pulling the missile from its silo, it is prepared, packed, and shipped to Vandenberg via several transportation means, railroad, air, and truck. Upon the arrival of the booster and the propulsion system rocket engine, the 30th Logistics Group inspects each component to identify any damage that may have occurred during shipment, as well as to verify proper configuration. Once the booster and the PSRE have been accepted by the Vandenberg Air Force Base personnel, they are transported to the missile processing facility. Maintenance personnel remove the raceway covers and install the destruct charge that is required for safety reasons. The missile will be destroyed if there is premature separation of the stages or if the missile follows an errant flight path. When the MGS and batteries arrive, a receipt inspection is accomplished and an instrumentation wafer is installed. The wafer is equipped with the important test equipment such as for command destruct, C-band, and telemetry. The command destruct package allows transmission of the destruct signal. The 30th Logistics Group also prepares the re-entry system. They position the appropriate re-entry vehicles into the deployment module and install the shroud. After the stages and re-entry system are prepared with the destruct and instrumentation packages, the components await for the arrival of the task force. Once the task force arrives, they are given briefings and orientations to familiarize them with their roles and responsibilities in the launch of Mike 05. The missile combat crews will undergo extensive briefings to ensure they understand the procedures required during this peacetime launch, and the maintenance teams will be undergoing orientations at the launch facility and their respective shops. Even before the task force signs for the launch facility and accepts it as their responsibility, the 30th Logistics Group has to refurbish the launch facility from the last launch, and that process can take up to 90 days. Approximately one week after their arrival, the task force is ready to begin emplacement and accomplish all maintenance tasks required to place Mike 05 on alert and ready for launch. The combat crews begin their alerts. They monitor all maintenance activities and accomplish the appropriate post-maintenance tests to place Mike 05 on alert. Once the sortie is on alert, the 576 Test Squadron, in conjunction with the 30th Logistics Group and 30th Range Squadron, accomplishes several pre-launch checks to ensure all safety requirements are met and that the test objectives can be met. This is done by accomplishing several command destruct checks and testing the C-band and telemetry systems. The 576 Test Squadron provides the code's personnel, launch analysis people, and a group of officers known as TOPAN. The TOPAN organization provides personnel who comprise the countdown team and oversee management of the receipt through launch process and the FOT&E program at Vandenberg. Mike 05's flight toward the Kwajalein Atoll is monitored the entire distance. The IFSS on board the missile is transmitting streams of data. Antennas receive this data from a number of locations. Two large telemetry dishes provide data links from sudden peak in the Vandenberg area. Vandenberg also provides optical tracking and filming to observe and record Mike 05's progress throughout its early stages. Further north, along the California coast, Pillar Point receives data and relays it to the analysts in Building 7000 at Vandenberg. 
Pillar Point has a command control antenna that can send a destruct signal as well as Point Magoo Naval Air Weapons Division. This network of instrumentation extends downrange to several other locations to include Fogelin, where re-entry is observed and scoring is accomplished. The data collected throughout the network relays to Telemetry Integrated Processing System, providing a wide range of viewpoints and lets the analysts see what is happening near real time. Building 7000 houses the central control of all launches. This control is separated into two segments, launch control and range control. The Launch Operations Control Center is provided to the agency that owns the missile. As soon as ignition occurs, authority and control shift to the Range Operations Control Center. The Range Operations Control Center oversees safety and will issue the destruct order if required. With the flight of Mike 05 culminates thousands of hours of work by the operational wing to keep it on alert and hundreds of hours of teamwork here at Vandenberg.